Welcome back to our video. This is the third part of the Super Universe Miscom. It is absolutely necessary that you be acquainted with previous presentations. The subject matter here put forth transcends standard thinking and conventional interpretation of the universe and physics. It is not something that has originated from a preceding model. It is a new paradigm, a new way of conceptualizing the universe and thus physics. It was previously mentioned in part one that defining the terms in physics is a must. Mainstream science although truly endeavoring, has not been successful in unraveling the mysteries of the universe. It has only described cosmological and thus physical space-time occurrences, but has not defined them thoroughly. For not having a stepping stone where to base all the terms, they have become circular and thus undefined. Description is not definition. It is urgently necessary that science delve into conceiving real definitions for the terms in physics. It is not only because this determination will manifold its advancements, but because it will be demanding. The real concern should be about our having to face up to new, insoluble, and intriguing questions that will overwhelmingly arise in the long run of humankind's existence. Science will not be able to keep pace with them if we do not know how to thoroughly construe them. Currently, they are described by their behavior, yet they are not defined. Here is another excerpt from our book, chapter 19. Let us consider this reasoning that would lead us to a wrong conclusion. A man is a being that walks on two legs, man's partial and precise definition. A parrot is a being that walks on two legs, too, parrot's partial and precise definition. Conclusion. Therefore, parrot and man are same entities. A parrot is a man, and a man is a parrot. This syllogism is invalid because the terms are not fully defined. The features describing both subjects apply to a great variety of entities, thus making them too vague and too broad. The terms, for not being duly discriminated, turn this syllogism into a sophism. Now, a man is a self-conscious rational being that walks in two legs, defined terms. A parrot is an irrational bird that walks on two legs, too, defined terms. Conclusion. Therefore, although both man and parrot walk on two legs, they are not same entities. Equal procedure can be applied to E equals MC squared. Energy, undefined term, equals mass, described but not defined, times light speed, light and speed undefined, squared. Now, if we define the terms according to the super universe framework, we will have energy is motion. Mass being energy matter is also motion. Thus, mass and energy are the same thing, a vertical interaction. Energy or space-time is the tendency of centrifugal and centripetal motions being at almost equilibrium. The disturbance of this tendency generates perceivable variables such as mass, speed, momentum, gravity, etc. Thus, plainly and clearly, we can define energy as being vertical counteracting motions that encompass space-time. These counteracting motions or vortices engender state shifts. 
Yet, we must bear in mind that motion that is perceived as a continuous linear developing process is sensed as such only by us tridimensional beings. Actually, motion through space is state shifting, and state shifting is vertical motion. Besides, MC squared stands for our actuality only. It describes one state of the universe out of a countless number of concomitant manifestations. In this sense, the most celebrated equation, as per our view, should be simplified to E equals vertical counteracting motions, or simply E equals VCM, energy, motion, mass, or space, time are equivalent terms. Gravity was described by Newton in his famous equation, one way or reason by Einstein as being the curvature of space, time, another. It was not defined. It was shown how it works or how it behaves in our reality, but not what it is. It has also been used to underline many assumptions as to how energy behaves. Gravity has been called the fundamental force in physics. If mainstream scientists ever try to define force cosmologically, they would for sure realize it does not exist. It is an innocuous term. As has been considered the property of objects that accounts for the quantity of matter they contain. Einstein finally showed us the interchangeability of energy and matter. E equals mc squared. However, energy is the only thing that there is, for matter is energy that affects us only in a very specific way, making the concept of matter irrelevant. It exists because we exist. The super-universe ignores it. Besides, definitions for mass and matter are circular. Mass is the amount of matter in something, and matter is anything with mass. Objects? What are they? Objects are quantities of matter. Quantity of matter is synonymous with quantity of energy. If energy is a continuous whole motion, for there is no such thing as energies, how can it be, in a comprehensive visualization, quantified? A great number of objects or any quantities are the oneness. So what is energy? It is mass times the speed of light squared. Then, what is mass? It is the quantity of matter something has. What is matter? Matter is energy deployed in a very special fashion. What is energy again? It is mass. Yes. But what is mass? Mass is the quantity. What is speed? What is time? What is space? What is gravity? Hilarious, isn't it? Shouldn't mainstream also be considered pseudoscience? The speed is the rate of motion or equivalently the rate of change of position expressed as distance d moved per unit of time t. It only shows us how it manifests in our actuality. Energy of matter, is this a sort of semantic entanglement? Energy of matter is the same as saying energy of energy. We should rather say that matter, mass, and speed are the same thing, for they are only states. The super-universe sees an object such as a pencil as speed. It sees no difference between speed and the object at all. It does not perceive this pencil being transformed into speed. It is actually speed, vertical speed. Inertia, as per mainstream, it demonstrates things in motion tend to be in motion keeping direction and speed constant. Objects at rest tend to be at rest. Yet, it does not tell us why it is so.
It is believed an object is associated with the property of inertia measured by units of mass. Things keep doing what they are doing unless disturbed by a net force. Yet, what is force? What can be at rest if everything in the universe is moving? Can we surgically isolate our planet from the rest of the universe? In short, it tells how it happens, but not what it is. Momentum. In a very restricted definition, momentum is known as mass in motion. It is equal to the mass of the object times the velocity of the object. Again, classical physics is dealing with undefined terms. Some may claim that these terms pertain to the effective theories for what really matters is the study of the effects of these undefined terms. This way of thinking would only ascertain the idea that a man is a parrot, or better is still a blind man, or maybe, who knows, a blind parrot too. This is nonsense. Science should not be underpinned by uncertainties. All this paraphernalia is a castle in the air, a whole complexity of concepts underpinned by hollow and undefined terms. Nevertheless, they are the undefined terms whose relations to one another, believe it or not, are the subject matter of physics. In a centrifugal prevalence mode, that is, in a condition that centrifugal predominates over centripetal in counteracting vertical motion, one would experience space and time expanding. Objects would be sensed as being lighter once a space and time would extend. One second would take more time to happen. An object would, perceivably or unperceivably, be bigger, not denser, and would take more time to reach the ground in free fall. Linear speed through space would be more likely to occur and enhanced. All this would tend to anti-gravity. It is known that astronauts, after being in outer space or in higher potential, that means not being attached to Earth, or in a condition prevalently centripetal, come back home slightly younger. In a centripetal prevalence mode, that is, in a condition that centripetal predominates over centrifugal in counteracting vertical motion, one would experience space and time contracting. Objects would be sensed as being heavier once space and time would shrink. One second would take less time to happen. An object would, perceivably or unperceivably, be smaller, not lighter, and would take less time to reach the ground in free fall. Mass in space would be more likely to be verified 
and his manifestation as such enhanced. All this would tend to gravity. It is a condition approximating compatibility with the unallocated singularity, only getting progressively more compatible. Hypothetically, anyone positioned almost at the center of the Earth, if this could ever be possible, that is, in a much lower potential, or in a condition overwhelmingly centripetally prevalent, would come back to the surface slightly older. In the superuniverse construal, circumscribed amount of mass is typical manifestation of space-time. Being in a lower potential means being much more compatible with the unallocated singularity. Being in a higher potential means being much less compatible with the unallocated singularity. The variations between these two conditions rendered through state shifting instantiates gravity or anti-gravity. An astronaut flying in outer space will not experience gravity and time will flow slower. He will age slower. On the other hand, his twin brother on Earth, for experiencing a centripetal preponderant condition that will make time flow faster, will age faster. Back to Earth, he will see his brother much older and a different world. In a mundane construal, we could say he traveled to the future. As you see, this has a lot to do with time traveling. If we can master energy deployed as a vertical interaction, time travel becomes feasible and real. By using vertical counteracting motion, we will not need to travel unfathomable distances at staggering speeds to travel to the future. It will be instantaneous or almost instantaneous. It will be an inward trip, so to say. What makes the difference is frequency. Scientists should try to depict energy in a vertical counteracting framework and configuration. It will be a hard time achieving, yet rewarding enterprise. Our planet and all the things that we consider mass are mostly in lower potential relative to the unallocated singularity. Objects that transcend our planet's gravity, or what we humans feel to be massless, is mostly in higher potential. However, vertical counteracting interactions may reveal other extraneous cosmological expressions, unknown and unintelligible to us 3Gs. They all are concomitant and synonymous, and thus ubiquitous. We will be at your entire disposal for further clarification concerning our Facebook content or the book itself. Please do not hesitate to contact us.